Why to study chemistry? Chemistry is the science that studies the composition and structure of matter and the changes it undergoes. Because everything in the universe is composed of matter, chemistry is the study of our material world. The chemical touches our lives and influences our activities in many ways that are often called the nuclear science. We chemistry practice all the time in our daily activities, i.e. the act of cooking, washing, taking medicine, fertilize the lawn, paint the house, or light a match, for example, are directly related to this science. In all these activities, substances interact and chemical changes occur. In our body, when we breathe, walk, and suffer food digestion, chemical reactions occur regularly. The environmental problems we experience and we deal today, as the disposal of domestic and industrial wastewater, acid rain, the greenhouse effect, photochemical smog, among many others, are all primarily chemical problems. Many goods are now made of polymers and ceramics instead of wood and metal, thanks to our ability to produce materials with properties not found in nature. However, chemistry is essential in the current revolution in molecular biology, which is exploring the details of how life is genetically controlled. That is, no one today can understand the modern world without a basic knowledge of chemistry. Concepts Structure of Matter Basics Matter and Atomic Theory The word matter comes from the real word, from the Latin. In Latin, it means matter, what that something is done. The matter is all that make up things that take up space, which has weight, and that can impress our senses. So, study the structure of matter is to study how matter is organized. The first manifestation of genuine scientific thought is traditionally attributed to Thales, who lived in the 6th century BC, the Greek city of Miletus on the coast of Ionia, now southeastern Turkey. It is impossible to have the exact measure of the effect of new philosophical thinking attributed to Thales. Knowledge of Western civilization is based on it. Looking back, we can see that from its very beginning, this new way of thinking contained certain underlying assumptions. These would determine, and more than two and a half millennia later still determining, both the form and content of our knowledge, were assumptions that sustain all subsequent scientific thought. Thales asked the questions, why do things happen as they do, and what the world is made and how it is done? By answering them, he assumed that the answer should be formulated regarding a basic matter that the world is made. It also assumed that there is an underlying unity to the world's diversity. But perhaps the most significant of all assumed that there are answers to these questions. And those answers can be given in the form of a theory, a word derived from the Greek, look, contemplate, and speculate, testabal. We know today that all the matter in the universe is made of atoms. But the creation and characterization of these atoms are still undefined and has gone through many changes. By its microscopic nature, the atom cannot be directly visualized and then imagined a model for its description. A model is made up of knowledge, experience, and tools available at the time that is postulated. The model is valid and accepted as satisfactorily explain the phenomena observed to date. When new facts are discovered, and are not explained by the model, it is changed or replaced by another. The model is not a reality, but one possibility envisioned by the human mind, always subject to evolution. Just as the human body is composed of cells, matter is composed of atoms, and this is seen as the fundamental unit of matter. The concept that matter is composed of tiny bits of matter has come up with Democritus, 460 to 370 BC. Democritus developed a theory that the universe consists of space and a number, almost an infinite number, of invisible particles which differ from each other in form, position, and arrangement. All matter is made of indivisible particles called atoms. The atomic concepts of Democritus remained stable as rocks for over 2,000 years, only complemented by John Dalton in 1804. Between 1803 and 1804, 
John Dalton established changes in the atomic theory, which were detailed in 1808. Dalton introduced the concept of discontinuity of matter. It was the first scientific theory held that matter was composed of atoms, bearing in mind that the theory of Democritus, although correct, was philosophical, as it did not rely on any rigorous experiment. For his atomic theory, Dalton made four postulates. 1. The field is divided into indivisible and unchangeable particles, which are called atoms. 2. All atoms of the same element are identical to each other, with the same mass and the same properties. 3. The atoms of different elements have different mass and properties. 4. The compounds are formed when atoms combine in a constant and proportional relationship. We now know that atoms can be divided and subject to change, and may even be part of a converted mass into energy by E equals mc squared relationship. The concept of isotopes introduced later changes the second assumption, since isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different masses. In Dalton's season had been isolated only 36 chemical elements, and still used cum symbols of alchemy to represent such elements. Dalton himself was the author of one of the symbiologies. The use of abstract symbols ended only around 1813 to 1814, with Berzelius, that in addition to isolated calcium, barium, strontium, silicon, titanium, and zirconium, selenium also found, thorium, and cesium. When Berzelius decided it was time to change things, he changed. Given that the old symbols were not easy to write, disfigured the books and not collaborating anything for your memory, Berzelius proposed that the symbols were represented by letters based on the first letter of the Latin name of each elementary substance. The Electron Discovery In the 19th century, the works of Heinrich Geisler, 1859, Johann Hittorf, 1869, and William Crookes, 1886, experimentally showed that when subjected to modern pressures, the gas can become electrical conductors. To reach this conclusion, they used the so-called cathode ray tube, i.e. a glass bulb connected to a vacuum pump, which aims to reduce the internal pressure. In the two ends of the metal tube, their ends, electrodes calls, attached to a battery. When the internal pressure reaches about one-tenth of ambient pressure, it is observed that the gas between the electrodes starts to emit light. When the pressure decreases further, about 100,000 times lower than the ambient pressure, the brightness disappears, leaving only a light spot behind the positive pole. Scientists attributed this spot, the rays, of unknown origin from the negative pole called the cathode. These rays were called cathode rays. The first breakthrough came with the atomic model of Thomson, who has used the electron to update the model of Democritus Dalton. The atomic model of Thomson, proposed in 1897, had proposed an answer to the question, how electrons and protons would be distributed in the atom. Thomson suggested that the total mass of the atom would be due almost entirely only to the positive charges, protons. These would be spread uniformly throughout the sphere, forming a compact uniform mass in this mass surface would be attached electrons, spaced uniformly. This model became known as plum pudding, which would resemble a covered pudding with raisins in the pudding, would be the mass of positive charges and raisins electrons. In this model already understood the divisibility of the atom, but the atom was regarded as a positively charged sphere with electrons spread around. This model was accepted until 1911, when Ernest Rutherford proposed another more improved model. This new model originated from an exciting experience which will be described below. The Atom of Rutherford The second and third major innovation came with Ernest Rutherford in 1911 and 1912. Rutherford was able to create two atomic models are still the most recognized of the atom representations. Rutherford first created a static model, and subsequently a dynamic model. To develop its atomic model, Rutherford experimented with alpha particles from a sample of polonium in an elaborate experiment. Rutherford's experiment was to launch a jet of alpha particles emitted by polonium 
a radioactive element, on a thin golden plate to see whether these particles would suffer any deviation to pass by the golden plate of atoms. Rutherford made use of this experiment, in which he tried to verify if the atoms were massive, using for this alpha particles, which have a positive electrical charge, as projectiles. The blade had to be fragile, one one thousandth of a millimeter thick, because it was known that the alpha particles cannot penetrate thicker obstacles. The blade need not necessarily be gold, maybe another metal. However, gold has been chosen to be very pliable and therefore more suitable for slide preparation. The results showed three different behaviors. 1. The most alpha particles can pass through the gold plate without undergoing any deviation. It indicates that these particles do not find any obstacles ahead and follow your path straight. 2. Some alpha particles can pass through the blade, but suffering an unyielding deviation in its path. This fact shows that these particles found some obstacle, but not too large, as they were crossing the blade atoms. 3. Very few alpha particles cannot penetrate the leaf and return to the same side from which they are released. This fact shows that these particles are an immovable obstacle to collide at some point of the blade atoms. If the atom is equal to the model previously proposed by Thompson as a compact mass of positive charges distributed uniformly throughout the metal, then the alpha particles not suffer much less substantial deviations would return. Conclusions Rutherford The atom is not massive, with an empty space then filled. The majority of the mass of the atom is in a small central region, the core, having positive charge, where the protons. Electrons are located in a region around the nucleus, called the electron cloud. This model became known as the solar system model where the Sun would be represented by the nucleus and the planets by the electrons around the nucleus in the electron. Although sophisticated and accessible, Rutherford's model had some problems because he could not explain the spectral lines of the chemical elements coherently and also could not explain the orbit of electrons. According to the theory of Rutherford, electrons could orbit the nucleus at any distance. When electrons are circling around the nucleus, regularly would be changing its direction. The classical electrodynamics, which deals with the movement of electrons, explains that such electrons that always change their direction, speed, or both, should continuously emit radiation. In doing so, they lose energy and tend to spiral into the nucleus. It means that atoms would be unstable, completely contrary to the reality. As the description of the Rutherford atom is not entirely correct, it did not clarify some remarks that had been made. Perhaps the most important of these comments were regarding the behavior of certain gases. These gases, low pressure, emit light in a set of discrete bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. It is entirely different from the radiation emitted by solid, which is spread evenly across the electromagnetic spectrum. Emissions of these gases' radiation were significant because they showed that, at least under some circumstances, the orbits of the electrons cannot be at any distance from the nucleus but confined to discrete the same distances or particular energy states. The Atom of Niels Bohr The next significant evolution in the understanding of atomic structure came with the atomic model of Niels Bohr. However, due to the great sophistication of this mathematical model and the succeeding, the full sophisticated understanding of the structure of matter was limited to a select group increasingly scientists. It is curious that the increased understanding of atomic structure reduces the number of people who understand. The atomic theory of Bohr was published between 1913 and 1915. She was able to explain the hydrogen atom spectrum perfectly. The Rutherford theory could not explain. To this, Bohr accepted the dynamic model of Rutherford with three postulates. One, the electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular orbits, Rutherford model, but without emitting radiant energy, steady state. 2. An atom emits energy in the form of light only when an electron jumps from an orbital of higher energy to an orbital of lower energy. Delta E equals H dot F. The energy emitted is equal to the energy difference of the two orbitals involved in the jump. 3. 
Possible orbits are those in which the electron has an angular moment integer multiple of h-2 pi. Thus, the third postulate tells us that the electron cannot be at any distance from the nucleus, but it is limited to a few possible orbits, which are defined by a parameter called the principal quantum number n. More details on quantum numbers will be presented later. n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, onward to infinity. In the atomic model of Bohr, we note that 1. The atomic model of Bohr explains the primary spectrum of the hydrogen atom and hydrogenic atoms with only one electron. 2. Let's calculate rays and speed for hydrogen and hydrogenic atoms with only one electron. 3. Does not explain the narrow spectrum. 4. Calculations rays and speed to H and hydrogenic atoms to high values of N and Z lose meaning. 5. For a multi-electron atom, the radius and speed of ideas lose their meaning. 6. Speed discontinuous in pulses, packets, or quanta. 7. Ray discontinuous in heels or wrists. Application of the Bohr model. Flame test. Fireworks. Bright and lamps, neon and vapor lamps, Na or Hg. Fluorescence and phosphorescence. Laser ray. Bioluminescence, the light of fireflies. The atomic model has continued to evolve. Sommerfeld solved the problem appeared soon after Niels Bohr enunciate its atomic model because it was found that an electron in a single layer had different energies. This fact could not be possible if the orbits were circular. Then Sommerfeld suggested that the elliptical orbits were as ellipses have different eccentricities or different distances from the center, generating different energies to a single electronic layer. For this, Sommerfeld introduced the azimuthal quantum number, which defines the orbit electron format. For the primary quantum number equal to 1, n equals 1, the orbit may be spherical. For n equals 2, there are two possible orbit shapes, spherical, 1 equals 1, 1 equals 0, and elliptical. For any principal quantum number n, there are n orbits of possible formats. Using the theory of relativity, Sommerfeld was able to explain the unfolding of classical Balmer series on the hydrogen atom. Then there were some more contributions from other scientists, namely Louis-Victor de Broglie, 1925, suggests that the electron also features, such as light, a dualistic nature of the wave and particle, double standard. Explained later in 1929, the first diffraction an electron beam obtained by scientists Davison and Germer. Werner Heisenberg, 1927, mathematically demonstrated that it is impossible to determine at the same time position, speed, and trajectory of a subatomic particle. It is important to characterize it for its power, since it is not possible to establish defined orbits. This statement received the principle of uncertainty, or indeterminacy name, of Heisenberg. Erwin Schrödinger, 1933, drawing on the electron wave behavior, established complex mathematical equations that allow determining the energy and regions of the probability of finding the electron, orbital not defined orbits. Schrödinger received the Nobel Prize for his work on quantum mechanics, undulating, and its applications to atomic structure. Definitely, it is abandoning the planetary model of the Rutherford Bohr atom, and appeared a new atomic model, the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Atom Features Atomic number, Z, is a number determined experimentally characteristic of each element representing the number of protons contained in the core and the various features atoms. In an electrically neutral atom, the atomic number is equal to the number of electrons, E. In a neutral atom, Z equals E. For example, sodium. All atoms have 11 protons. Therefore, atomic number Z equal to 11. All iron atoms have 26 protons. Therefore, atomic number Z equal to 26 mass number A. The sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom, 
A equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Number of neutrons, N. In a neutral atom, the number of positive charges, protons, is equal to the number of negative charges, electrons. It can also be given by the difference between the mass number, A, and the atomic number, Z. N equals E, if the atom is neutral, or N equals A minus Z, atoms with electrical imbalance, ions. Cations are positively electrified atoms are atoms that have more positive charges, protons, than negative charges, electrons. It occurs because the atom lost electrons. The total number of electrons lost equals the total number of positive charges acquired. Example, Na plus Ca plus plus or Ca2 plus Al3 plus. Anions, atoms are negatively electrified. These atoms have more electrons than protons. It occurs because the atom electrons gained. The total gains electrons are equal to the total negative charges acquired. Examples Cl, the, or O2. Balance load indicates the number of connections that an atom can hold. As each connection is involved one electron, the total acquired loads, positive or negative, determines the valence. The cations and anions can be monovalent, Na+, Cl, bivalent, Ca2+, O2-, trivalent, Al3+, P3, tetravalent, Pt4+, plus SiO4, 4-. Atomic mass, also called atomic mass medium or medium atomic weight, is the average atomic mass of the isotopes. Of the chemical element with the carbon-12 as standard, the atomic mass is expressed in atomic mass unit, U, formerly used to represent as AMU. Molecular weight. It is the sum of the atomic weights of all atoms forming the molecule. Example, determination of the molecular mass of water, H2O, 1.0 times 2, plus 16 times 1, equals 18 U. Mol is the unit of measurement of the amount of matter. It is a basic unit of the International System of Units, SI. A mole of any substance has 6.023 times 1,023 molecules. For example, one mole of any gas molecules has 6,023 times 1,023 molecules of this gas. One mole atoms of any element weigh as many grams its molar mass, and molar mass and atomic weight of the element are numerically equal. Example, chlorine atomic mass, 35,5U equals molar mass of chlorine, 35,5 grams, mole. Molar mass, molar mass is the mass of moles of atoms of any element. The molar mass of an element is numerically equal to the mass of the element in atomic mass units. Thus, the atomic mass of the element informs its molar mass. Number of Avogadro Numerical constant applied both in chemistry and in physics. The formal definition of the Avogadro number, the number of carbon-12 atoms in 0.012 kilograms, 12 grams, carbon-12, which is approximately 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Avogadro's number can also be defined as the number of elements in a mole. Curiosity. Why always carbon-12? Historically, carbon-12 is chosen as a reference substance because its atomic mass can be measured very accurately. Molar volume. The volume is measured in liters occupied by a mole of substance. The molar volume of gas is constant for all gases to the same pressure and temperature. CNTP5 in the molar volume equals 22.71 L mole, as the IUPAC6 guidelines. Isotopes, isobars, and isotones. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have identical chemical properties, as they pose the same electronic distribution but different physical properties. They have the same atomic number, Z, but have different mass numbers, A. Isobars 
are atoms having the same mass number, A, but different atomic numbers, Z. Its chemical properties are totally different. Isotones are atoms with different atomic and mass numbers, but with the same number of neutrons. Measurement Units In chemistry, to perform any experiment, in addition to the basic concepts of matter and energy, it is also necessary to know some measurement units. The measurement of a quantity is a number which expresses a quantity compared to a prescribed standard. Pasta, M, is the amount of matter that exists in a body. Determination of mass of a body is made by comparison of its mass, initially unknown mass, with other previously known, a standard mass. For this determination, it uses a device called a scale. The volume occupies a place in space is a characteristic of matter associated with the quantity called volume. In other words, the volume of a portion expressed matter how much space is occupied by it. The volume of a body is determined by multiplying its length by its height and its width. V equals length. Height. Width. Great volume units are cubic decimeter, dm3, per liter, L. Cubic centimeter, cc, milliliter, ml, and the cubic meter, m3. In the international system, SI, the standard unit of volume is the cubic meter, m3. However, the unit is further used in the chemical liter, L. General properties of matter. Are the properties of matter observed in anybody, regardless of the substance that is made? Extension. Property matter has to occupy a place in space. The volume is measuring the extension of a body. Your body, for example, has the extension occupies the space you. Inertia. Property matter has to remain in the situation you are in, whether in motion, at rest. The greater the mass of a body, the harder it is to change its movement and greater inertia. The mass is measuring the inertia of a body. Impenetrability. Two bodies cannot occupy simultaneously the same space. Compressibility. The property of matter that is to have low volume when subjected to a certain pressure. Elasticity. The property that the matter has to return its initial volume after ceased the force acting on it. Severability. Property that the matter has to be divided into smaller and smaller parts. Break a piece of chalk to reduce it to dust. How often have you shared the chalk? Indestructibility. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed, only transformed. Example. When burned, the matter turns into gases, smoke, and ash. Specific properties of matter are the properties that vary according to the substance of the matter is made. Organoleptic. Color. Matter may be colored or colorless. This property is perceived by sight. Brightness. The ability of a substance to reflect light is what determines its brightness. We realize the brightness by sight. Taste. Tasteless can be a substance, taste, or flavored. This property is perceived by taste. Odor. Matter can be odorless, odorless, or citron, smelling. This property is perceived by smell. Form and physical state, perceived by touch. Hardness. Resistance is defined by the surface offers when scratched by another material. The material is considered harder than the other when you can scratch that another leaving a groove. To determine the hardness of materials, used a scale of 1 to 10. The value 1 corresponds to the less hard mineral that is known, talc. The value 10 is the hardness of diamond, the hardest mineral known. With it, one can cut and scratch materials such as glass. Malleability. Property that allows the material to be molded. There are pliable and non-pliable materials. Example, cobra, silver, gold. Ductility. Property for transforming materials into yarn. Examples, copper, silver, gold. Density. Found through reason, division, between the mass of a substance and the volume it occupies. 
When we place several pieces of cork in a container with water, we find that all float in the liquid. Already we play to several pieces of lead, all sink. Some people try to explain this by saying that lead is heavier than cork. Interestingly, however, a piece of mass 10 kilogram cork floats, while a piece of lead 1 kilogram sinks. There is experimental that no matter the dough, pieces of cork floating in the water and pieces of the lead sink. After all, sink or float depends on what feature of the object. Density The density of an object or a sample of some material or substance is the result of dividing its mass by its volume. State of matter All matter is made up of small particles and, depending on the greater or lesser degree of aggregation between them, can be found for teaching purposes in three physical states, as in fact there are five states of matter, solid, liquid, and gaseous. The stones, ice, and wood are examples of solid matter. The water, milk, gasoline, and honey are in the liquid state. But the hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, and carbon dioxide are in a gaseous state. Each of the three states of aggregation has its characteristics, such as volume, density, and form, which can be changed by the change in temperature, heating or cooling, and pressure. When a substance changes state, undergoes changes in its macroscopic characteristics, size, shape, etc., and microscopic, particle arrangement, without, however, changes in its composition. Body the body is a word that comes from the Latin corpu. A body is a limited portion of matter. For example, the noun designates gold material, while a gold bar designates a limited portion of gold, a body. System. From Latin and Greek systema, meaning group, is any portion of the limited physical space or not containing matter, and that is the object of study. It is synonymous with a combination of parts coordinated with each other and contribute to a result or to form a set. Environment. Excluding the system under study is the rest of the universe. Molecules. From Latin, moleculae, it is the diminutive of the soft Latin word, which means large mass. From the chemical point of view, a molecule is the smallest particle of an element, or a chemical compound that can exist in the free state and still possesses all the properties of that element or compound. For example, the water molecule is formed by two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. If this molecule is split, no longer water, but gaseous hydrogen and gaseous oxygen. Types of transformations By analyzing the changes that matter can undergo, there are two types of transformation. In one of the types, the transformation is done and undone with relative ease, and the material retains its original composition as folding and unfolding a sheet of paper. The other type of transformation occurs when the same sheet of paper on fire. Note that the roll is converted into energy, smoke and ash in this processing. The paper will not return to the paper. The transformations of materials, energy or both, receive the phenomenon name. The phenomena can be divided into chemical phenomena and physical phenomena. Chemical phenomena, those that cause changes in the structure of matter, involving chemical reactions. For example, burn a note from a US dollar is a chemical phenomenon. Physical hazards are those that do not cause changes in the structure of matter, do not involve chemical reactions. For example, if you just tear or fold a sheet of paper, you are providing a physical phenomenon. Chemical Elements Everything that is around you is made up of one or more of the 114 elements known today. A chemical substance is a key element, a group of atoms, that can be chemically transformed or broken something simpler, i.e., are pure substances existing in nature. Silver, mercury, and sulfur are common examples. Only 90 of the 114 known elements present naturally occurring. The remaining elements have been artificially produced by nuclear chemists using high-energy particle accelerators. Each chemical element is represented by chemical symbols with one or two letters taken from their Latin names, mostly, and other languages. The names have different origins, i.e., 
the popular name of the material that is found in nature, some characteristic of the substance, the name of its discoverer, or even a tribute to a scientist. Examples. Calcium comes from calyx, Latin, lime. Bromo, the bromos Greek, meaning stench. Helium, discovered by spectrum analysis of sunlight, is the sun god of the ancient Greeks. And Nobelium, a tribute to the Swedish physicist Alfred Nobel. From the 111th element, scientists differ on the symbols to be used for their representation. The nomenclature most widely accepted means of these elements by the first letters corresponding to their atomic number, written out in Latin. The atomic number element 114, for example, is represented by UUQ, un aquarium. Compounds, or chemical substances. A little over 100 chemical elements, and they form thousands of different chemicals. How is this possible? Only because the atoms of chemical elements can gather forming groups called clusters, called molecules or groups, or compounds. Ion, the difference between one molecule and an ionic compound, is addressed in chapter Chemical Bonds. Each group forms a chemical. The graphical representation of the chemical composition of a substance using the symbols and numerical indices 8 is called chemical formula of the substance and indicates the constitution of each unit forming substance. For example, the chemical formula of water is H2O. So when we say that the chemical formula for water is H2O, we must understand that each unit of water is formed by the combination of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of element oxygen. The most widely used chemical formula, the molecular formula, or simply formula, indicating the elements present in the substance and how many atoms of each element are interconnected. The other types are the gross or minimal formula, proximate formula, electronic formula, and the structural formula. properties not found in nature. However, chemistry is essential in the current revolution in molecular biology, which is exploring the details of how life is genetically controlled. That is, no one today can understand the modern world without a basic knowledge of chemistry. Concepts Structure of Matter Basics Matter and Atomic Theory the word matter comes from the real word, from the Latin. In Latin, it means matter, what that something is done. The matter is all that make up things that take up space, which has weight, and that can impress our senses. So, study the structure of matter is to study how matter is organized. The first manifestation of genuine scientific thought is traditionally attributed to Thales, who lived in the 6th century BC, the Greek city of Miletus on the coast of Ionia, now southeastern Turkey. It is impossible to have the exact measure of the effect of new philosophical thinking attributed to Thales. Knowledge of Western civilization is based on it. Looking back, we can see that from its very beginning, this new way of thinking contained certain underlying assumptions. These would determine, and more than two and a half millennia later still determining, both the form and content of our knowledge were assumptions that sustain all subsequent scientific thought. Thales asked the questions, why do things happen as they do, and what the world is made and how it is done. By answering them, he assumed that the answer should be formulated regarding a basic matter that the world is made. It also assumed that there is an underlying unity to the world's diversity. But perhaps the most significant of all assumed that there are answers to these questions and those answers can be given in the form of a theory, a word derived from the Greek, look, contemplate, and speculate, testabal. We know today that all the matter in the universe is made of atoms, but the creation and characterization of these atoms are still undefined and has gone through many changes. By its microscopic nature, the atom cannot be directly visualized and then imagined a model for its description. A model is made up of knowledge, experience, and tools available at the time that is postulated. The model is valid and accepted as satisfactorily explain the phenomena observed to date. 
When new facts are discovered and are not explained by the model, it is changed or replaced by another. The model is not a reality, but one possibility envisioned by the human mind. Atoms. 2. All atoms of the same element are identical to each other, with the same mass and the same properties. 3. The atoms of different elements have different mass and properties. 4. The compounds are formed when atoms combine in a constant and proportional relationship. We now know that atoms can be divided and subject to change, and may even be part of a converted mass into energy by E equals mc squared relationship. The concept of isotopes introduced later changes the second assumption, since isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different masses. In Dalton's season had been isolated only 36 chemical elements, and still used come symbols of alchemy to represent such elements. Dalton himself was the author of one of the symbiologies. The use of abstract symbols ended only around 1813 to 1814, with Brazilius that in addition to isolated calcium, barium, strontium, silicon, titanium, and zirconium, selenium also found, thorium, and cesium. When Berzelius decided it was time to change things, he changed. Given that the old symbols were not easy to write, disfigured the books and not collaborating anything for your memory, mind, always subject to evolution. Just as the human body is composed of cells, matter is composed of atoms, and this is seen as the fundamental unit of matter. The concept that matter is composed of tiny bits of matter has come up with Democritus, 460 to 370 BC. Democritus developed a theory that the universe consists of space and a number, almost an infinite number, of invisible particles which differ from each other in form, position, and arrangement. All matter is made of indivisible particles called atoms. The atomic concepts of Democritus remained stable as rocks for over 2,000 years, only complemented by John Dalton in 1804. Between 1803 and 1804, John Dalton established changes in the atomic theory, which were detailed in 1808. Dalton introduced the concept of discontinuity of matter. It was the first scientific theory held that matter was composed of atoms, bearing in mind that the theory of Democritus, although correct, was philosophical, as it did not rely on any rigorous experiment. For his atomic theory, Dalton made four postulates. 1. The field is divided into indivisible and unchangeable particles, which are called Why to study chemistry? Chemistry is the science that studies the composition and structure of matter, and the changes it undergoes. Because everything in the universe is composed of matter, chemistry is the study of our material world. The chemical touches our lives and influences our activities in many ways that are often called the nuclear science. We chemistry practice all the time in our daily activities, i.e. the act of cooking, washing, taking medicine, fertilize the lawn, paint the house, or light a match, for example, are directly related to this science. In all these activities, substances interact and chemical changes occur. In our body, when we breathe, walk, and suffer food digestion, chemical reactions occur regularly. The environmental problems we experience and we deal today as the disposal of domestic and industrial wastewater, acid rain, the greenhouse effect, photochemical smog, among many others, are all primarily chemical problems. Many goods are now made of polymers and ceramics instead of wood and metal, thanks to our ability to produce materials with proper